Welcome back for another edition of NC Sports Weekly News. In the lineup, the nautical channel team at Kielerwoche for the very best of sailing from Germany. RC44 Sweden Cup goes to Team Aqua in Marstrand, while Synergy, Katusha and Artemis battle for last podium position. Route de Prince to final stretch, Lalou Roucairol wins in the 50-foot Maltese, and Sébastien Josse takes first in the Mod 70 class. Watch out, Parco is back with a perfect 20 at the Oakley Pro in Bali as this record-breaking ASP season really heats up. AC34 update, will the show really go on? Plunge into the action with NC Sports. Nearly 2,000 events at sea and on land. Close to 40 classes between offshore, inshore and Olympic. Tens of thousands of visitors in a week-long festival of sales for both talented amateurs and the best pros in the world. This is Kieler Woche 2013, an event that is the very symbol of the long-standing German nautical tradition. It all started with a welcome race of records here in Kiel as the 100-footer Ezimit 2, helmed by German sailing legend Johan Schumann and Danish pro Jess Graham Hansen on the SAP Extreme 40 catamaran, completed the course in just over two hours and set new reference times both in the monohulls and in the multis. At the event's main matchup in the eight Olympic classes on the water, local superstar Philip Boole successfully defended his 2012 title in the lasers by winning the much-awaited battle against Brazil's Robert Scheidt. Dockside fans in Kiel with TV audiences and online viewers from all over the world got an in-depth and close-up view of the races this year, as Kieler Woche International TV and SAP Analytics provided a unique window on the event, enriched by advanced virtual tracking complete with performance statistics. Stay tuned for the upcoming NC Sports editions of Top Story and Buzz for full coverage of Kieler Woche 2013 with special correspondent Lucy M. S. Bauer and the Nautical Channel team. Hello, NC Sports fans. Join me, Lucia Metzbauer, for a special report on Kieler Woche 2013, Germany's greatest festivals of sales. Check out this week's NC Sports top story in Kieler Woche as the legendary Johan Schumann speaks out on the state of the sport, the pro sailor career, the AC34 flop, and much more in a very special Nautical Channel exclusive. NC Sports, plunge into the action. Banking on nine podium placements in ten regattas, Team Aqua dominated the fleet races at the RC44 Sweden Cup in Marstrand. Chris Bakes, a UK team guided by Kiwi Cameron Appleton, sailed to victory with ease, yet the battle for second and third places was indeed a heated one to the very last day of racing, with the Russians on synergy sparring against two more up-and-coming British teams. Brian Benjamin's high gear and John Basadone's Peninsula Petroleum with tactician Vasco Vascotto on board. The cards were reshuffled as the breeze jumped from 12 to 20 knots on Sunday's only race, and the near debutante USA 1 Ironbound took the daily win. Aqua's fourth place finish was plenty for overall victory, while three teams managed to tie at 48 points overall. Thanks to better placements and direct confrontation wins, Synergy took second, iGear captures third, and Peninsula Petroleum had to settle for fourth overall. With two more events on the calendar early in the fall, first in Kai Sky Portugal and then on to the World Championship at the Canary Islands in Lanzarote, the RC44 season is down to the wire and has now shaped pretty much into an all-British and Russian affair. Aqua is currently the championship leader, Katyusha holds on to second, while Synergy and the Swedes of Artemis Racing now share third place.
Sébastien Josse with the Edmond de Roches, the Mod 70 crew, and La Lou Roucayrol with his 50 foot Arquemar et Jean Aquitaine team in this very first edition of La Route des Princes. It was a very special round Europe race exclusively for the multi hulls with both inshore racing and offshore regattas, only for the very best on the circuit. 2,450 nautical miles in five legs connected Valencia, Lisbon, dun la Hoguerre, and Plymouth to the finish line at the Bay of Morlaix in northern France. Joss's victory on points was built through complete domination of the inshore events and thanks to a consistent performance offshore, including the first place in this final rush across the English Channel. It's great, we did well, and it's thanks to the whole crew. We knew it was going to be the final sprint. No one lost their nerve, especially after the poor start. We worked hard all night and all day to achieve this final result. A surprise Lalu Rukai Hall on a still developing multi 50 also clinched the last leg and took the overall win in the 50 footers by a scant to two and a half point margin, mostly thanks to a series of valuable bonus marks captured on each leg. We really did not expect the victory. We did consider perhaps a win in a single leg, but then we took home the overall race, which is tops of course, especially for the entire crew that worked so hard. So it's a complete joy. The ASP WCT is heating up as Joel Parkinson comes back with a vengeance in Bali by scoring a perfect 20 and winning the Oakley Pro. The Aussie reigning champion finally responded in kind, equaling Kelly Slater's perfect 20 at the Falcon Fiji just two weeks before. Bali was made for breaking records with the top seeded in full form. It started with John John Florence getting his 10 in what could be one of the highest airs in surfing history. I was just, I like, I don't know, I was like in the air and then I saw the bottom and everything just happened so fast and I just like landed perfect and um, I think I claimed it super hard but I, mean, I was super stoked. Trailing for the first part of the season, Parco had to respond on the Bali surf and so he did, defeating Tahiti's Michel Bouret in a tight final. Yet the two consecutive tens scored in round five got the loudest message to the competition. Joel Parkinson is back. That was incredible. That was just, it was just like free surf, you know, it doesn't really feel like an event, you know, it feels like you just, it's so enjoyable. It just, uh, it was a 35 minute heat, I was just like, I don't want this to end. It's just, you know, there was more waves out there to be had that were just, you know, 10s and even 12s. To get two in, in 20 minutes like that was pretty, it's amazing. Defeated in the last round by a super hot CJ Hobgood, Bali didn't fare beyond a fifth place for Kelly Slater, still bagging valuable points to stay in top contention. You know, I was trying to go first. I mean, I was thinking I was going out there looking for barrels, and I kind of was for the first half, and then I finally realized, like, it's not really a barrel game now, it's just a turn game, and, you know, CJ's, that nine that he had just had the perfect speed and shape to it, you know? He got way ahead of me, and I couldn't catch back up. World leadership was indeed brief following the historic Fiji Pro. Slater has already been set back to number two in the world ranking by Mick Fanning, with a consistent fifth place finish here in Bali. Parkinson jumps from seventh to third place. Jordy Smith clings on to fourth, and Taj Burroughs keeps contact now ranking fifth overall. Will this turn into another year of Parkinson versus Slater? Next stop for this record-breaking men's WCT 2013 is French Polynesia for the Billabong Pro Tiapu in mid-August. Be there with NC Sports. Once again, the America's Cup awaits judgment. In what has become perhaps the most troubled edition in its long history, the 34th challenge appears to have finally begun. The long-awaited and promoted Summer of Sailing in San Francisco Bay will kick off this 5th of July with the inaugural regatta parade and speed trials, while the Louis Vuitton Cup begins on Sunday the 7th. Question is, will the challengers be on the start line? 
As we close this edition of NC Sports Weekly News, Team New Zealand and Luna Rosa are awaiting the final verdict of the international jury on the official protest against the America's Cup Race Management 37 new safety recommendations. In particular, the Kiwis are contesting those new rules affecting the foiling system, arguing these are unacceptable changes to the previously agreed upon AC class rules and have little to do with safety. Furthermore, these modifications are considered as an attempt to hamper the challenge's progress and to legalize the configuration adopted by the American Defender Oracle Racing, which envisions trim tabs for the foil elevator. An opinion shared by the Italians of Luna Rossa and many expert observers. Should the jury rule against these new ACRM single provisos, we just might get an America's Cup this year. Conversely, if Regatta director Ian Murray does get his way, a trip to the New York Supreme Court appears ever more likely. The America's Cup 34 is now seriously at risk.